This morning, I'm on my way to Billy Bishop Airport in downtown Toronto, where we're taking our first look at the all new, all electric Rolls Royce Spectre. This is half a million dollars worth of electric car here in Canada, and it's making a grand entrance. Not only are we approaching the car for the first time by helicopter, but apparently we're going over Niagara Falls for a bird's eye view while we're doing it. Should be something special. So come along and let's see how it goes. So as you can see, Rolls-Royce has dropped the Spectre into Canada in quite the dramatic way, plenty of flair, as this car deserves. It's a significant launch for the Rolls-Royce brand. Not because electrification is extremely important for sustainability to the luxury set necessarily, because a few thousand cars a year isn't going to make much of a dent in climate change, let's be honest, but their customers are asking for it. They want this near silent operation. They want this ultra smooth ride, no vibrations from the engine and that sort of thing. And the average Rolls Royce owner doesn't drive their car more than a few kilometers a day. So it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people who can afford this level of luxury. And if you follow the automotive industry, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, it's just a flashy i7 from BMW, isn't it? No, it's not. There's a few parts that are shared, but for the most part, this is a Rolls-Royce product. It's built on the same platform as the Rolls-Royce Ghost, and that platform was always intended to host electrification eventually. And it had to be a Rolls-Royce for the, this car to meet the brand standards. They say it needed to be a Rolls-Royce first and an EV second, and that's very much how the car was designed. From a power perspective, this is a dual motor propulsion system and it has 584 horsepower, 664 pound-feet of torque. It can get from 0 to 104.5 seconds or 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds. That is pretty darn quick for a car that weighs 6,371 pounds and that's just a tick under 2,900 kilograms. You don't feel that weight at all when you're driving this thing and I'm sure that's what you're waiting to hear is what does it feel like. I've had the privilege of driving Rolls Royces before. I've driven a Ghost, I've driven a Phantom and one of the things that was suggested to us here is that it wouldn't take us long before we forgot we were driving an EV and just felt as though we were driving a Rolls Royce. That is very accurate. The main difference between driving this and driving an, any other Rolls Royce is the sound. And a typical Rolls Royce environment, it feels like driving a cloud, right? It's, it's that seamless contact with the road. You feel connected, but you feel very much like you're floating over it also because it's just very smooth, very composed. And the idea is that you just glide over the road surface. As far as drive modes go, there are two, on and off. <laughs> and th that is by design. There's not really a need for a sport mode in this thing. It is ready to sit you back in your seat when you want that level of power, but most Rolls Royce drivers are not gonna drive their cars that way. So on and off for the purpose of this vehicle is really gonna do just fine. The one adjustment that you can make is there's the drive mode and then there's also a B mode, a brake mode, which turns on the regenerative braking. And that's to, of course, help preserve some range. And that really is exactly what it sounds like is one pedal driving and you turn it on and off and away you go. That's as unfussy as the people who drive this car will want it to be. In other Rolls Royces, you do have that sort of thrum of the engine in the background. And that's the only thing that I would say is missing from the experience. And it's not that it's missing, it's that it's different. These cars are meant to be for people who don't want to be disturbed by being in the car. They're often used as chauffeur cars and people sit in the back and work and watch movies and sleep and relax and, and want to have that luxurious, not overly sporty experience. Now, it's not that there's a lack of power here. Woo! <laughs> there, there's just as much power as there would be in one of the V12s. It's just different. It's instant torque instead of building up to the torque and it's but it's just as powerful and it's just as impressive and it's an experience driving one of these now if you've been following the launch of the spectre then you know a lot of the parts about how they tested it in extreme cold and extreme heat from negative 40 celsius and fahrenheit that's the point where they line up by the way up until 122 fahrenheit or 50 degrees celsius and so this ev has been tested in every possible condition on the planet to ensure that it can meet the expectations of its very demanding customers 
There's been no official Canadian testing for the range as of yet. So the US figure from EPA testing is 260 miles. If you convert that straight from the EPA figure, then you get 418 kilometers. When we got into this car, it had a 75% charge and was showing a range of about 350. So that math adds up. Peak charging speed is 195 kilowatts, and that's not the fastest in the industry, but that's also not something that Rolls-Royce was prioritizing. They feel that their customers are gonna charge at home and charge at the office and not really drive long enough distances to need to do any fast charging in between. So that speed is there when you need it, but also it's capable of a 22 kilowatt home charge, level two charge, and that's the higher priority and the thing that makes it more sense. And this is a large car and you feel it. So it's about five and a half meters long. That's 215 inches, but done in a coupe style with coach doors. It all comes together into this just beautiful package. I think this car is just about perfectly designed for my taste. All the usual touches, they haven't skipped on the grill at all. It's the, the traditional Rolls Royce grill, despite the fact that this is an EV and all the little details that you expect are here in this Rolls Royce, like the center cabs and the wheels that align when you stop and the umbrella that's tucked away inside the door. The starlight headliner that looks like a galaxy full of stars as you're sitting from the back seat. And yes, this car starts at half a million dollars Canadian, but from there, your only limits are your budget and your imagination. You can build this car to any specification, any color combination, and any feature you can dream up that you would possibly want. Part of the exclusivity of ownership is how much you truly can make this vehicle your own from top to bottom in every corner, every inch, every millimeter inside. In case you're curious what that back seat is like, because this is a two-door, it's not designed to be a chauffeur car, this car. This is a Rolls Royce that's meant to be driven, and yes, they do make those. The Ghost is another one. But the back seat is actually quite comfortable. This exact car doesn't have the champagne cooler. It doesn't have a TV back there or any of those things that you might get in cars that are more intended for that purpose from Rolls Royce. But it's a comfortable space. There's plenty of headroom and legroom and the seats are nice and comfortable and it's a little bit of a wiggle to get into but once you're there it's spacious it may not be the back of a limousine but it's certainly not a penalty box either a few other things that are new for the spectre fully digital instrument cluster that's never been done before and also you can customize it to match the color scheme of your car and they'll do that for you at the factory which is kind of cool the infotainment system you can tell it's BMW based, but there's a new skin on it that really makes it custom to the Rolls Royce experience. When you call up the assistant, you get the spirit of ecstasy appears. They actually call the system spirit now. And so it's a more of a dedicated system. It still has very much that iDrive feel, but that's not a bad thing because iDrive happens to be one of the better infotainment systems in the industry. So Rolls Royce has a good parts bin to pull from there. We got to know this car today with some of the experiences that Rolls-Royce owners would be likely to seek out if they were driving around in the Niagara region. We went from Niagara Regional Airport to 13th Street Winery for some of their famous butter tarts, had lunch at Pearl Morissette, one of the most exclusive reservations in the Niagara region and one of the top restaurants in the country. The reason being that they are farm to table quite literally. The farm is where the restaurant is located and everything that goes on the table there comes from that space. And it was overall just a very fitting way to get to know this car within a range and timeline that the people who would buy it are most likely to use it. I guess if somebody were to twist my arm and say, you must point out something negative about this car, what's it gonna be? I, I, point out two things. One is that the voice recognition system has had some trouble understanding me and not quite catching my directions when I'm asking to input navigation commands, that sort of thing. Easy enough to get around by typing in destinations manually and that's something that might get updated later with an over-the-air update. The other is that the A-pillars are pretty broad and the mirrors on the sides are quite large as well and they're is a little bit of an impediment to visibility out the front corners because of that. Is any Rolls Royce owner, potential owner, seriously going to consider not getting this car because of those things? Of course not. And for the things that do matter and the things that will make a difference, Rolls Royce has hit them all bang on here. This car is 
precisely what this brand's first foray into electric should be. From every angle, this car is gorgeous. It drives exactly as Rolls-Royce's first electric car should drive. It drives like a Rolls-Royce, first and foremost, with the addition and the benefits that come with an electric powertrain with not anything truly taken away. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit that little button down there that lets you subscribe so you don't miss any more of our videos because we would love it if you saw them and interact with them and let us know what you think. Please find us on all the major social media platforms as well. We love hearing from you, and thanks for watching.